activity in China's services uh, sector climbed its highest in uh, five months in December, according to a private uh, Kaishin Services PMI, which read 52.9, uh, topping the estimate of 51.6. A number of 50 is, uh, is good. That's in contrast to an official index that was out uh, earlier this week that showed that the services sector uh, slowed. That official gauge tracks larger state-owned companies compared to the smaller ones that Kaishin surveys. And tourism uh, uh, gave it a boost for those service numbers that Chinese government is continuing to encourage more foreign tourists by making it easier for them to, to come to China. Beijing has agreed with Thailand to permanently waive visa requirements for each other. Uh, Visa-free travel between the two countries will start in March, uh, though Thailand began waiving visas for Chinese nationals last September. Also, from January 1st, U.S. citizens no longer have to submit uh, proof of round-trip air tickets, hotel reservations, or uh, uh, an itinerary or an invitation letter uh, to apply for a tourist visa uh, to China. And over the New Year's three-day weekend, domestic tourism generated $11 billion. That's three times uh, as much as last year and more than 5% above the uh, 2019 pre-pandemic revenue. The Ministry of Culture and Tourism says the number of trips taken domestically more than doubled from 2023. The winter wonderland of Harbin and other areas in northern China were a big draw, as Cheng Mei Fei reports. <laughs> Harbin Ice and Snow World. The city has been trending on Chinese social media for the past few weeks. And this, the icy slide, is the holy grail for these pilgrims behind me. They're queuing for up to six hours. Oh. How long did the queue for? Five hours. It's worth it? Yes, uh, I'd say it's worth it. Where are you from? I'm from Jiangxi. Wow, that's far. Yes, very far. I took a plane. So how do you like Harbin? The north is, after all, different from the south, so it's worthwhile to come. So to see this amount of ice and snow, and especially how everything is crafted, and imagining how many people have worked here, how many hours have gone into building all of this, and it's happening every year, it's very impressive. It is super impressive. Do you know where they got this ice? Uh, I would expect from the river because earlier I saw one ice cube with a little fish inside it was fro frozen. No way! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm real happy. During these epidemic years, my hometown had few visitors. Now, finally, people have come. The more, the merrier. Tales of Harbin's incredible hospitality reflected in the municipality's public thank you letter to its southern guests have been the amusement de jour on the internet. Locals joke they've never been treated like this and they feel like strangers in their own town. During the New Year's holiday, Harbin says it hosted more than 3 million tourists who brought in almost 6 billion yuan in revenue. That's about 840 million US dollars. While Harbin's going viral, it's not alone in seeing a significant rebound in tourists in the first New Year since COVID pandemic measures were lifted in China. I really think Harbin's boom is not an isolated phenomenon. From Zibo to Harbin, these domestic destinations did not become popular because they are cheap. Rather, it's about consumers pursuing something beyond the ordinary, something with cultural characteristics. A small variety show has been organized for southern tourists venturing from Harbin to Mohe, some 1,000 kilometers away, by rail. This is our effort to be innovative. To let southern passengers truly feel the warm and bold personalities of our northeastern people. Never did I think I would one day be clubbing with Cantonese aunties on a train en route to China's northernmost city. But that is the magic of northeastern China. Chen Mengfei, CGTN, Harbin in Heilongjiang province. For more about uh, China travel, uh, as the new year kicks off, we're joined by Jonathan Cao, Managing Director, Greater China, BCD Travel. Good to see you again. Happy New Year to you. Uh, we, got another, Happy new year, we got another pretty big new year, as you know, the Chinese New Year that everyone is talking about, where they're going to go, what they're going to do. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about these numbers here, post-pandemic travel numbers up. No surprise, right? Yeah. So I think it's uh, very encouraging to seeing all the new visa requirements uh, being dropped. 
um, and uh, a steady improvement for the international travel. So the latest round, we see uh, China and Thailand reach an agreement to waive each other's citizens' um, visa requirements going into the country. And uh, earlier, uh, last year in December, um, Germany, France, the Netherlands, Spain, Malaysia also have been uh, granted visa-free status coming uh, to China for uh, less than 15 days. So I think it's all very encouraging uh, for uh, the drive for um, visitors coming into China. And also on the other way, uh, a lot more countries are also uh, waiving the requirement for visa travel uh, for Chinese citizens uh, going to their country. So I think uh, it's um, slowly and steadily going back to normal for uh, international travel and uh, certainly a uh, uh, boom for uh, tourism. So, okay, so this is good. And, and having lived uh, in China years ago, uh, there are kind of two buckets of tourists, right? There's the regional tourists, whether you're from Singapore or Thailand or, or Korea, and you're going back and forth to China for the weekends. Then there's the uh, sort of further away international tourists from Europe and the U.S., who are coming to China, they're not coming for the weekend, they're, they're coming for the week or two weeks yeah. uh, to, to come and visit. The problem with that is that flights have not returned to normal, right? There is a huge shortage of flights, uh, both from Europe and the U.S. going into China. Obviously, the conflict uh, in Ukraine is a bit of an issue. And the other side, I can't put my finger on why we're not seeing those flights come back between the U.S. and China, because it seems to me the demand is there. Am I right? Yeah, so I think yes and no. So uh, on one hand, the, the demand is there, but there is also the limiting factor with the U.S. Vis uh, visa. So there is a long uh, waiting time for applying for U.S. visa in China. So I think uh, at the moment, we're back at about 63 flights a week, um, but that's compared compared to 2019 figures of 345 flights. So we're still like only a fraction. Uh, overall, um, international flights recovery, uh, we're at about 65%. But certainly, uh, if we look at just the U.S. and uh, Europe, flights are lagging behind uh, the regional flights, like within Asia Pacific. Yeah, so regionally, it's doing well. Now, the reverse is also true. Um, Chinese, uh, very proud tourists as they, they go all over the world. Where are they going and why are they going there? So I think uh, right now we're seeing... Um, uh, a lot more travel within the region, especially the, the countries that we just mentioned earlier with uh, visa-free policy, so, um, as the countries are trying to uh, compete with each other for the Chinese tourism dollars. So we're seeing uh, Thailand and uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Japan being, uh, and South Korea being some of the major uh, attraction, uh, attractive destination right now for Chinese tourists. And also, uh, uh, Hong Kong and Macau has always been a uh, hotspot for uh, for Chinese tourists as well. The, the domestic tourism is something that um, isn't often perhaps talked about enough, but you mentioned Macau, uh, you mentioned Hong Kong, but even within China, there are an awful lot of destinations. We, we just talked about Harbin, uh, obviously many people in China visiting. Do we have any numbers on pre-pandemic versus post-pandemic on the amount of uh, domestic travel in China? Um, so I think uh, we do. So it's uh, certainly increased. I, I believe it's about 15 percent even compared to 2019 level and uh, and definitely a lot higher for the new uh, compared to the new year for uh, last year. Um, so we're seeing some of the hotspots in within China, um, in addition to Hong Kong, Macau, also Senya has always been a staple, um, very attractive attract, uh, destination, and also uh, Harbin. So I think this year Harbin has been uh, performing outstandingly, uh, and uh, there is a very strong um, interest in winter sports like skiing. And uh, so we're seeing the, the northern and the northeastern regions, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, tourist, tourism happening, uh, especially with the uh, winter and the snow and ice themed venues. Uh, we are just a few weeks away from the Chinese New Year uh, kicking off, which, uh, of course, as everyone knows, it's, it's crazy travel time. Uh, families getting together, friends going on vacations. Uh, what can we expect uh, this year? So we, I think we're going to expect a solid growth this year, um, but not as dramatic because of uh, last year, uh, the country reopened uh, back on, uh, on January 8th. So people already started traveling last uh, Chinese New Year. But this year, we're definitely going to see more international travel because this time around, uh, there is more time to uh, arrange for a visa. 
um, because last year was kind of a sudden opening and people were caught and didn't have time to apply for visas. So we'll see more uh, visa-free countries this year, more international flights, and uh, definitely we'll see much more international travel this year. Jonathan, uh, we didn't have time, but next time I want to get to some of the, the best hotspots that you personally like. Uh, good to see you. Thank you, as always. Thank you, Phil.